You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. Oh, the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Whale Wars After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Whale Wars After Show. The world is a vampire. There we go, Ben. Every week. Every week. Hello, everybody. Bing is for doing, and we're here doing another after Buzz TV Whale Wars After Show for Season 5, Episode 4, Into the Belly of the Beast. Whale Wars. Whale Wars. Whale Into Wars. the Belly of the Beast we go, Ben Bottomley. Excellent. Let's go. I am your host, Phil Svitek, joined alongside, of course, the young, handsome Ben Bottomley. That is I. Hello, everybody. Unfortunately, you can't see us tonight, but... It's all right. They probably don't want to. They'd nah. rather listen to us anyway. Yeah. So um, let's get into it. Um, you know, in terms of tonight's episode, we had two major plot lines, and we will discuss as such. You know, they kept kind of intercutting back and forth to keep it interesting, and they quite did. But let's talk about the Bardo and Irwin back to Australia and what went on there. Um, so at length, last time we discussed what the strategy was, and... My first thought is I'm going to be interested to see how far the um, the Japanese ship follows them. Yeah. I think, I mean, I wonder if they'll follow them all the way back to port and then try to mess with them when they're either landing or trying to fix the Bardo. I don't know. You know how we keep saying if you want to stop them, you have to do it in the port. Yeah. Maybe that's what they're going to do. I mean, it's it's a... It, it's a hundred percent guaranteed to keep an eye out on two boats. Yeah. Um, now, if you know the boat's gonna be there for a while, or it's just gonna be the one boat, then maybe you can leave. Um, I, either way, I mean, if I it, again, it seems like you know nothing happens fast in the water. Yeah. So that. let's <laughs> like, oh, we found a ship on the radar. Only eight hours until we get to it. Yeah. You know. So so at the end of the day, I think. Just have the ship follow. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've still got a massive fleet out there. I don't think one ship is going to... I think it's going to be beneficial for that one ship to keep its eyes on 66% of the Sea Shepherd's crew. Yes. And that, that is that, way more that's, beneficial. That's what I would do. <laughs> um, and then, apart from that, you know, uh, f luckily the crew is safe. And let, how... Let's 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 talk about the amazement of this pontoon holding on to basically gum and spit. Yeah, that was. I mean, you know, it it broke off, but those straps did hold it on, kind of. You know, it was it was unattached, but still I, attached. I credit Beck. I mean, you know, um, there was that one part in, in the episode where um, you know they fell because I think one of the ropes hit him. I I wasn't exactly. Sh do you know what exactly happened when they were like, "Whoa!" I. I think they said it got hit by another rogue wave. And and they fell? Yeah, or something. I mean, I guess it'd be kind of like turbulence on an airplane, but they got knocked around a bit. Well, here's the thing. It's like, okay, it's like you're standing on top of a roof, except this roof is moving. Yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty slippery. Uh-huh, and it's it's wet, and you're being slammed by waves. That was impressive that they were holding on there. That was. Um, so I, I give a lot of credit to those guys. I mean, out of all the ships, the Bardo scares me the most simply because of, A, you're you're contained within this vessel. You, I mean, yeah. it's basically like a submarine yeah. for all intents and purposes. That, it does, yeah. It definitely scares me, too. I mean, <laughs> just the thought of being in there, 
that enclosed space with no there's no deck that you can walk outside and just like experience the fresh air and openness you're always in a tight corridor and the thing isn't meant for the waters that they take it into no so there's always a sense of danger when you're on that thing because something could happen like your pontoon breaking off yes so those guys are brave and then of course the scenario came up when we're hitting a lot of big waves um this was i, I believe immediately following and so the debate became okay do we send a small boat which is equally dangerous to save people or is that just going to risk more people yeah mm. peter brown says i mean i i don't want to rag on him but because he had you know he had a valid reason for saying what he did he was saying that um it's not worth it because we're going to be putting everybody at risk if you do this yeah the entire crew of both ships will be at risk because well, of that yeah. tail. Are, are they teaching you philosophy in high school yet, Ben? Sure. Okay. So you understand, it, so utilitarianism versus, um, I, it begins with a D. Yeah. I can't think of it right now. Yeah. But, bas but, but the uh, utilitarianism meaning, you know, you basically go by the numbers. It's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, the other one, i got to remember this. <laughs> you keep talking, Ben. I'll figure this out. I'll figure this out. I'm going to bing it right now, baby. Bing. Um, no, it, it, but, you know, in terms of Peter Brown, he's going with utilitarianism versus, yeah. like, okay, if you go the other route, you say, you know what, while we may die, we deserve to try to help these people because mm -hmm. we're in a better position to help these people. Yeah. And he doesn't, I mean, he obviously views uh, the situation and the numbers and just the risk involved of taking... Or taking that little boat out there to uh, try and rescue these people. I mean, I I don't know what I would do in that situation, but um, you appear to still be banging it over there. I I am trying to bang it. Uh, right. I typed in the utilitarianism and thinking that it would give me uh, hopefully the opposite, um, but I'm still I'm still working on it. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I mean. I, I actually, I'm actually surprised at Paul Watson's decision, given that, um, what wh wh we're presented in, in the drama that happens. Because mm -hmm. Sid's certainly torn. He's like, we can't do this, and uh, eventually Paul makes the decision that uh, certainly the Bardo wanted him to make, and he sends the small boats out. Yeah, but Paul, Paul definitely has more experience out on the sea than probably anybody on the Steve Irwin and the interview I'm I'm never going to remember anybody's name <laughs> on this show but the interview with the I think it was the first mate mm -hmm. of the Bardot he was saying yeah Beck. we sure Beck that sounds right he was saying um, we know what they're thinking over there it's it's dangerous waters um, we've got the Shonen Maru on our tail yeah it it probably doesn't make too much sense to come and get us but we wouldn't be asking so much if we didn't think we needed it. They are not out here seeing, just feeling what this boat is doing and seeing what's going on with that pontoon. And I think Paul probably was able to understand what they're going through a little better and realize that they needed help. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I mean, you know, just to play devil's advocate, you can, some people don't necessarily want to be pushed to a certain level. Especially, I mean, you're pushing these, like like they said, you, you know, are you prepared to die for whales? It's a, uh, you know, uh, we may joke about it, but that's a serious issue. Yeah, um, they're not joking. And so, you know, uh, you have to be able to push people to a certain level, and they can rise to the occasion, even though they might have thought that they couldn't. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So there's that aspect of it, too. Right. So, I don't know. Either way, um, I'm glad that the Bardo certainly got what it wanted, mm -hmm. and they're going to save pi five people. Right. They did... Oh, no. We didn't see what happened, actually. We, we didn't. We didn't. We don't know how that ended. No, it's it's ongoing. That was kind of the big decision. Yeah. Is Paul going to send um, the boat out, and we're left with send the small boats. Yeah. I was, and then, of course, the Shonen picks up speed. That looks good. So, um, so we saw that. Now, um, on to the Bob Barker. Bob Barker. Um, it starts out 
promising. Yeah. They f I mean, they find the whole fleet, pretty much, in the beginning of the episode. Pretty much. And then they, they spot their ship, which, of course, is a uh, Yushinmaru, I believe. Yeah, I mean it just it just sucks how it's uh, just so much of a guessing game. Yeah, and if you guess th if you go for the wrong one, then that's it. You we gotta have, have some sort of satellites. Like Google Earth must be advanced by now. <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah, maybe they could. Mm, <laughs> I don't know. They haven't gotten any like anonymous tips this time, apparently, like they have in the past. But I guess they don't really need to because they've. It's it, that's not really gonna help them in any way, but. Well, um, you know, what what needs to ha be happening more is okay. Um, today, you know, their strategy was use the prop fouls. Right. And I like the second prop foul more. The metal one, the yeah, chain. That, yeah, that one's pimp. That one's That's awesome. That's what you need to go. You know, because then you're attaching that to the damn boat. Obviously, it's more dangerous. But come on. And that would suck to get off. Those are permanent. As far as we're concerned. Yeah. Um, you know. But I also think, you know, throw a damn tracker on that thing. Yeah. You know? I mean, if yeah, if they can get close enough, that'd be worth doing. Well, because here's the thing. You know that these guys are going to be following you, and you know you need to stop them. Okay, so why don't we hook on the metal, prop foul, and then why don't we also add a track tracking device onto it? Therefore, as we get away, we know, you know... You know, we we start to eliminate. It's like playing Battleship almost, right? Right. You know, you, you're finding okay, where where are we, you know, in this case, finding the Nishimaros, their their misses, you know, mm -hmm. but at least we know where they are. So you know, now we yeah. can kind of track it mm -hmm. and stay away from those people. Yeah, stay away from the wrong ships. And not only that, they might, some of them, you know, might lead us to the whaling ship. Mm -hmm. You know, that's true. So I think I don't know. I would like to see that more. Yeah, definitely. What do you think of our new captain for the small boat? New captain. That was a new captain? One of them was. Po oh, there was Potsy. Oh, 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 for the Delta. Okay, I thought you were talking about the Bardot. No, like, no, what? no, no. <laughs> okay. No, Alex, he's awesome. Right. He's not going anywhere. Yeah. The um. The captain for the small boat. He was just... No. He was a little bit older. Was that... I did they say that was his first time taking out a small boat? Yeah. Okay. I mean he Thanks seems for watching. <laughs> I okay, names. Remember that. I can't remember the names. I didn't even tell you the name. Here. I just told you he's a new captain for the That's small boat. That's how bad it is. <laughs> um <laughs> anyway, um well, I mean he must have not made an impression to the point that he was probably good. Yeah, he um, Right. We'll give him the benefit of that if you didn't Yeah, no. I didn't really remember him or realize what like what he was doing yeah realized that he was new so i mean he he got the prop fellers in there when he needed to yeah and he didn't kill his entire crew so Mission no he did not um unfortunately the radars went out yeah or the gps rather it was radar radar um and that's no fun i mean he, i forget i wish i could give the quote exactly but you know um he, just that such a loss of you know when it, when you don't know when your mothership is it's like your home right and like i mean that's a pretty yeah shitty like... home to begin with no offense <laughs> yeah to, to be one but like when that's your only like land mass that's your that's your haven you don't want to lose that out there yeah no you really don't want to be especially like if you're stuck out there at night we've seen that and it gets it gets bad but yeah um he definitely, I mean, they lost the radar due to those water cannons, which I didn't realize. I mean, they looked powerful, but I didn't realize just how insane they were until they got that close to try to put that chain on there. Yeah. I mean, those, those things are powerful. Oh, yes. But, um, nevertheless, you know, I, I, you know, you, you got to take one for a team. And, and I don't know, I think, I think for me, adrenaline would just set in. And, like, again, if I had the ability to put on that metal prop foul, I'd be like, let's do that every time. I don't care. You know, yeah, we're going to get sprayed with water. We got, you know, we got suits on. Yeah, it's still going to hurt like a biatch, but come on. Let's do this. Like, no, seriously, that's the, go for the best option. Yeah. You know, we're, we're at, well, this is whale wars, not whale sc scrimmages. Yeah. I I think they need some better 
delivery system or just better things <laughs> in general. Yeah. I mean, the the chain, like, the method they were going to use to attach it, it didn't fire. So they lost their radar and they got just, one of the guys got pretty messed up from those water cans for nothing. Well, not for nothing, but yes. Um. Well, okay. well <laughs> yeah, hey, you know, I don't. Know. Well, wh- what really, really sucked, though. I mean, this was out of anyone's control, really. Was the Bob Barker and the engine crap? Now, yeah, that was a really good timing for that to happen. <laughs> but I mean, they, you know, what to their credit, they fixed it fast. Half an hour to fix a problem. That's it's not too bad. For whatever reason. I thought he said 15 hours. No. And then, yeah, okay. Though that That's a lot better, half an hour? Okay, yeah, that's really fast. Uh, 15 hours sounded a lot more realistic to me, but <laughs> half an hour, okay. Yeah, they, they said half an hour. Okay, well, that's good to know. Um, and yeah, they were they were back on it, Um, you know, when, and Alex was able to go full speed right after that, which, again, half an hour for what seemed like a pretty big deal. You know, I just I just hope he didn't like um, you know sometimes when you fix a problem you're like yeah it works, and then like is everything working? Seems to be fine. For yeah mostly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean I would hope he didn't do that. I I don't I don't think he's that type of guy. But you know mm-hmm. I mean just so many people out there that that do do that and and it's because you know especially in this situation it's not because you're jipping anything but you just want to impress by like you know like the the situation and so you want to make sure that you're d- doing it fast um so again it's not that typical like you send in your phone for repair and they just kind of go they look at it they plug it into a charger they kind of and then send it back to you yep working now <laughs> um but um so they're back on the water but you know it was enough to have the the japanese Get back to them. Yeah, that that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I am remembering this. Yeah, that that did happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so as Ben remembers, but um, apart from that, then they then they tried to, you know, we're kind of make, we're kind of jumping at back in time and things like that. It's chronologically we've been jumping back and forth, but oh, yeah. um, you know, then they sent off the second prop fowler mm-hmm. to um to stop them in the water again, so that way they can get away now that they are fixed and all that. So. Um, that was weird, though. They got those fixed much faster than ever before. Well, I think they're they know what's expected. Yeah, that's you know that explains it, which is why I wanted to see new things this year. Yeah, like I was hoping that chain would work because I think a metal chain getting tangled up is gonna suck a lot more than a rope. You know what? We shouldn't have like a remote control small boat. Mm-hmm. That looks like it's got like it would have like wax dummies on it, and then um, you know that you can just totally just have go against the Japanese, right? And it would just hit one of their boats and explode. It could explode. Yes, that would be fun too. I think we need to sink some boats, sink some ships. Yeah, but like you know, <laughs> and 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 just to be causing damage to them and pe- the j- first off, a would be you could. Just a have fun with it, mm-hmm. just by annoying the Japanese, because they'd be like shooting at this damn boat, thinking that there's actual people on it. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, you could obviously sacrifice it to do whatever you wanted it to mm-hmm. do. Phil Peterson, that's the new boat driver. Phil Peterson. Yes, Phil Peterson. Yep. So, <laughs> um. Anyway, why don't we take a quick commercial break and then come back with predictions, Ben? Does that sound good to you? That sounds fair to me. All right. Hey there, good buddies. The handle's Wooly Bear. I'm a truck driving man, but I'm not that old school kind of truck driving man, no. I like to listen to podcasts while I'm driving through these great United States of ours. And my favorite podcasts in the world are from After Buzz TV. And why? Because <laughs> After Buzz TV is like a post game wrap up show for all your favorite TV shows, like Jersey Shore, Dancing with the Stars, Mad Men, and a whole truckload more. I like listening to my Gossip Girl podcast, catching up with all my fellow fans and getting all the latest news and gossip. You know, I got some strong opinions. And After Buzz TV lets me share those opinions with thousands of other listeners. Hooey, what a feeling. 
I used to doze off on those lonely stretches of road. And don't worry, I got the cruise control. But now I'm wide awake and listening to all the After Buzz TV goodness. <laughs> Check them out. Give them a holler. And tell them the old woolly bear sent you. Welcome back, guys. Um, so just um, just really quickly, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some news that I found real fast. News. Hold on one second. There we After go. Buzz TV news. All right. In the addition of you've got, um, Whale War stars Shannon Mann and Chad Halstead discuss their work with the Ocean Conservatory organization Sea Shepherd. The group, according to their website, aims to end the destruction of habit. Ha yeah, habit and slaughter of wildlife in the world's oceans in order to conserve and protect ecosystems and species by using innovative direct action tactics to investigate, document, and take action when necessary. Um, the organization recently garnered attention when their founder, Paul Watson, was arrested and subsequently released from a German jail after Costa Rica claimed he endangered a fishing boat and crew in 2002. Only a few months earlier, a Sea Shepherd boat called the Bob Barker disrupted a Japanese fishing vessel with lasers and flares. Lasers and flares. Yes. Um, this news came. Uh, this came uh, just recently. Yeah, that's from the Huffington Post. Well, now we know to expect lasers and flares. Yes, indeed. I like those. So that is your AfterBuzz TV news and gossip for this week. But without further ado. <laughs> All right, Ben, what do you predict? What do I predict? Hmm. I predict lasers and flares. Good one. Yeah. Um. Well, let's see. Where are we? We've got the Barkers being tailed by a ship, and so all of them are being tailed. Yes. Hmm. Yes. I um. hope. I think the Bob Barker is probably going to try to lose the tail because that's what Alex likes to do. I think they need the tracker. They yes. really need the tracker. They need to disturb them more. Yes. And uh, one thing, uh, you know, as you guys are supporting um, the Sea Shepherds, one of the ways you can support us is by go. Um, if you're shopping on Amazon, go to AfterBuzzTV.com first. Click on our Amazon banner and shop away, Shopaholics. It helps us. It's no extra cost to you. So let's keep this ship. Staying afloat. How about that? What do you say, guys? Will you do us a solid? We think you will. Uh, so, Ben Bonley, uh, what do you want to promote? Um, I want to promote Breaking Bad Season 5 as much as possible because it's going to be awesome. Okay. And when does that begin? That begins July 15th at a certain time. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest, but... After Buzz TV is check be your local it. check your local listings. How there about you, that? There you go. That'll work. Um, so yes, it, it is another show that After Buzz TV will be covering. We've got, I believe, RJ Mitty and Anna Gunn set to be here for the premiere. That is cool. So um, so stay tuned for that. And any further developments, of course, follow us on Twitter at After Buzz TV. Um, until next time, we'll be seeing you. On behalf of Ben Bottomley, we're out. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.